Uh, Michelle Tahami is the Global Regulatory Policy Leader for Energy and Utilities for IBM. She's responsible for policy strategy and position development working globally with utility companies, energy policy makers, and other partners to accelerate the development of an intelligent utility network and the integration of renewable energy sources and distributed energy assets. Ms. Tahami's 17 years of experience have been divided between serving utility clients and with the federal government. She has a bachelor's in political science from Catholic University and a master's in public administration from George Washington. How are you all today? Okay. Um, how many of you have a car? Right, that's good. How many of you have a plug-in? Okay. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about a different spin on energy efficiency, i.e. plug-in electric vehicles. And um, a couple reasons why we're excited about plug-ins. You might not realize this, actually I was up here last year talking to a bunch of staffers on smart grid. So we view smart grid or plug-ins as really an extension of um, as the smart grid and the entire infrastructure. And I know that Smart grid is near and dear to many of our hearts as we're watching the stimulus um, activity move forward. Um, but for plug-ins, the energy efficiency <coughs> tie is really doable. One, if you can think of um, moving um, from gas to electricity, it's better for the environment. <coughs> and then secondly, is if you can think of how to better maximize or optimize the electricity that's already available on the electric grid by influencing people's behavior to, um, to refill at night, then that's another way of looking at energy efficiency. Can we switch to my first chart? I'm sorry, this is Bill, I didn't realize that. Just go ahead and build it all the way through. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so why, why plugins now? Climate change, clearly, top issue. Um, more and more we're seeing that, you know, um, originally people would say, yes, I'm interested in um, energy and environment, but as long as it doesn't impact my pocketbook. Now we're saying that actually people are willing to make those choices, um, and it's not economic decisions. It's really more good um, environmental stewardship decisions. Fuel prices, you saw it started going up again last week. I think there was a malaise, perhaps, that we wouldn't have um, $4 a gallon um, gas prices. You know, it looks like maybe that might change um, again this summer. Who knows? We'll see. Um, consumer support, interestingly, um, the forecast by Frost and Sullivan is 130,000 cars globally are estimated to be on the road by 2015. And in the U.S. survey, 27% of all Americans are estimating that their next vehicle purchase will actually be electric plug-ins. Um, government stimulus, right? There's stimulus, um, if you look at the smart grid provisions, they do allow for um, demonstration projects around plug-ins. Um, technology, we're gonna have cars um, starting now, 09, 2010, 11, 12, France, US, uh, Denmark is a big push for it. Um, and then utility grid push pressure, just to, again, to optimize the grid and to optimize the electric usage, um, that's a real constraint that, that people want to maximize. Next chart, please. So, um, like I said, vehicles are announced for that they're coming out in 2010. Um, there's a couple scenarios that people are looking at, and I'll get into more detail on this in a second, but. Um, home charging um, off-peak is preferred, and, and to encourage non-peak charging will, um, will probably require time-based pricing. I know that's controversial with some utilities, but that's, that's the common public view. Um, some utilities want to have direct control of, util of their vehicles, um, but drivers are probably expecting to have seamless access. So that not only will the utility be uh, managing it, but it'll be really so um, so involved that you'll see it at grocery stores and at parking lots and at airports where people can refill or recharge their car. 
Um, renewable energy is something that make, that's making plugins even more interesting. If you look at Denmark, they're doing um, a project with Edison where they are taking um, um, electric um, wind power, and that's how they're going to be fueling their electric vehicles. Their electric vehicles. And then standards are emerging. A lot of utilities are looking, working. Um, California, several utilities are working with EPRI. Um, there's, um, like I said, France, EDF, um, Dong Energy in Denmark, and um, there's a consortium of about 30 utilities, um, glo US, that are really looking at how do you work with the car manufacturers, etc., to make this a reality. Thanks. So these are the three, I don't know if you can see this. All right, to change it to white. These are the three charging infrastructure scenarios. What I, I mentioned is the residential charging. And a lot of people think that's going to be the one dominating the industry, but I think it's, it's too early to say. Um, the other one is the public investment appeals to, um, to automakers. And then the third is the private parties. And I think as a, as a market, we have to be prepared to accommodate all three of these charging scenarios in order to best um, really facilitate the rollout of plugins and then really to take the best advantage of what they can provide to the energy um, and the environment. Next chart, please. Sorry, Bill, again. A couple um, policy issues that you might be um, faced with over the next couple years to make this a reality. One would be tax collection. So if you can imagine um, easy pass, right? Have, have you, does anyone have an easy pass in there? Okay. So um, in order to make that true up system so that um, you have the taxes as you're going from Massachusetts to New York, for example, how do you have best taxes true up? Who gets paid what? And how do you manage that as a system? Um, demand management, again, it's going to be how those scenarios actually get played out. Can you affect demand? What times of the day? Carbon caps. If there is, um, if cap and trade does go forward in the U.S. or internationally, can you use a plug-in to actually offset? So can you imagine where you're going to want to say, um, here's my measurement that I offset my carbon, and here's my proof. And so would you want your car to do that? Possibly. Having a tracking device, device to do that. Interoperability rule standards, always an issue. And then incentives. What incentives um, will consumers need to, to actually buy these vehicles, um, behave how we want them to behave, i.e. charging at nighttime rather during the peak hours of the day, et cetera. So there's some issues that you might be seeing uh, that, that we just wanted to highlight for you. So that's, that's really plugins in a, in a nutshell. Um, we think that, um, Plugins can play a major role for energy and environment. We're excited about it as a corporation. And um, thanks for letting us come and speak. Thank you.